So when you, if you've used it in the past before, um, you know, now you're able to log in and you're able to get all of the features that we could have paid for, but we don't. So that's really nice. Um, and then, you know, if I'm going and there's something that you want to see because you've used Actively Learn um, or Newzella, just ask, you know, a small group right now. So just turn off your mic and ask or put it in the chat. Um, because like we did this earlier for SMS and the elementaries and afterwards I thought, Andy, I didn't show them this, or I didn't show them this, um, because most of them had never seen either one before. Um, and I was kind of just showing them like, this is how you, this is what it looks like. This is how you search, blah, 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 blah. Um, but there's some advanced features, like looking at it from a student point of view that you can see. So just let me know if you want to see more as we go. Um, so actively learn, um, if you're not familiar with it is a warehouse of texts. It has articles school novels, poems, um, you know, small short stories. Um, it has a ton of different things. And over on the left, it, you know, it talks about the different resources for ELA, social studies and science, but there's a lot that is, um, you know, available outside of these content areas. I know we found things for health. I found things for different language departments. Um, it's just, there's a lot available, not just for the uh, core content. Um, it's also a close reading tool. And the biggest thing with Actively Learn is that you can embed scaffolding. So if you are having kids read a text, you can embed a video to help support their understanding. You can embed a definition, you can embed a picture, a diagram, whatever it is that you want that will help them understand what they're reading and maybe allow them to go beyond the text, you can place right within the text. Um, the freemium version, you have three um, uploads so you can upload your own PDF version of the text and you can um, provide you know embed some scaffolding in there but with the prime version as far as I can find you have unlimited uploads I'm not sure if it's truly unlimited or if it's like 20 um, and then there's an introduction video here that we won't get into um, right now but you are more than welcome to go back I think Andy put the slide deck link in the chat um, so you can always go back and um, you know, look in the video because it, it'll actually walk you through. This is how you do this. This is how you do this. Um, because this is a pretty um, powerful tool. Um, there's a lot to be done with it that we won't be able to get through or go over in this 30 minute session. Um, so when you log in, this is what it looks like. This is my dashboard. Um, if you want to search for, you know, whatever it is, you can search by grade level. You can search by Lexile level. You can search by standard. But beyond that, you can look at whole curriculum units starting at sixth grade all the way to 12th grade. Um, there's a ton of genres, ton of themes. You can look at articles and news. So like if you are maybe even outside of the content area and you want to look at something for math, I mean, the, if out of the ELA, social studies and science, you want to look like look for something in math. So maybe you want to see math in the news. Um, you can look in there. Um, you know, obviously they have some current events in there. So if you're looking to um, connect, you know, if you teach social studies or world geography or human geography, you can um, connect it to the news and current events there. Um, you also have your imports over here. So uh, if you have a text that you use that they do not have, they have thousands and thousands of texts. But if that you find that you have a text you love, you can import it. Um, you can upload it. So that's where you would upload whatever text that you want your students to view. And then um, over on the left are where all your classes are. And so um, being at the high school, your LMS is Canvas. And so in the normal life, you would integrate with Canvas. Um, but I contacted the company yesterday and they put a halt on all integration with Canvas at this point because that requires just a meeting with them uh, a meeting with with actively learn and our tech department and they just can't support all the tech departments right now so because they opened it up to everybody <clears throat> they are suggesting that you create a class so like when you and we'll talk about it later but when you go and add a class and you hit the plus sign you have two options you either integrate your google classroom for free and you just sync it or you create a classroom within actively learn which is what i've uh what the company suggests for you to do as a high school um, that usually uses Canvas. So <clears throat> there are a ton of genres and a ton of themes. So more than you would randomly think. So if you if you want to look up, um, you know, something on a speech or a short story or anything that has to do with, um, you know, biographies, you can just you can search by that. 
or if you want to search by themes and you want to make sure that you're hitting a theme or you're looking for to expose students to specific themes, you can search by themes. And I thought those were pretty extensive, so I wanted to just highlight those really quick because um, there's not a lot of, um, you know, like Newzella, they don't provide this many options. Um, and so some of the other platforms don't provide this many options as well as when you're when you're searching for a specific text. Um, if you are looking through the, you know, this one just happened to be popular middle school short stories. If you're looking through the text and you are, you know, trying to figure out which one you want, if you hover over it, you'll be able to see the topics. Um, you'll be able to see the essential question, the length. So this one's 10 pages. It's suggested uh, grade level is 8th through 11th, and the Lexile level is an 880. So you'll be able to see all of that without even going into the actual um, article. Um, if you want to look at it later, you can star it or you can add the plus sign and then you'll be able to preview it. And so when you click on it, this is what it looks like. And immediately you'll be able to see um, some teaching ideas for the text. You don't have to do these things, but it'll say you can embed a poll, you can do a text to text connection. There's even related assignments down here. Um, so like it says, use this video to help students further explore questions of free will and fate. And then there's a link to the video. And so I didn't obviously take a screenshot of the entire idea um, list, but there's a ton of things that you can embed and use within this text um, so that you're not brainstorming and recreating the wheel. Um, you also will have um, different assignment directions at the top of every article that you choose. And um, it'll also talk about some extra help text summary. But when you decide that you're going to use an article, you'll either assign it like it is and it's canned and it's ready to go. It's got questions embedded um, or you can customize it. So if I go into my account and let's say I just pick this first one. Um, again, I can assign it or I can. Um, I can, can you hear me, Andy? Yes. OK. Um, so anyways, what I mean by assigning and not customizing yeah. is that the company has already created most of these articles with um, things already embedded. So there's already a poll here. Uh, you know, there's there's a question. I mean, there's a, um, a picture of who this guy is. Um, there's a key term that's highlighted and it says it's a respiratory illness caused by a virus, blah, blah, blah. So all of these things are already here for you to use if you don't want to change it at all. So this one, question two, DOK2, here's your standard. Here's even the correct answer. Here's the explanation. So this is a question just like Edpuzzle. If you're familiar with Edpuzzle, the students cannot move on within the text until they've, it will stop them until they've answered this text, I mean, this question, and then they can continue to move forward. Um, but as you can see, the DOK level continues to go up as you go, go farther. Um, and so this is if I want to assign, you know, this as is, and I don't want to customize it. Um, so if I just, if I choose to customize it, it'll pop back, you know, in a, it'll pop back up and I can do some things to it. Um, but I want to go over the toolbar really quick because these are some things that I think we skip over. And if you have somebody in your class, like if you use the text standards, you can obviously change your colors, you can change your font, all of those things. But at the very bottom here, um, it talks about, using the dyslexic option. So if you have students that are dyslexic or you have somebody, or you're within a special ed theme, I mean setting, um, you might wanna use dyslexic settings. And honestly, like there's kids out there that just digest text better using dyslexic settings. So that's that's an option within the, the T. Um, you can co-author a text if you co-teach, or maybe you wanna send a copy of whatever um, article that you've already embedded, embedded stuff into, you can send that to a um, somebody in the same department. Um, if you use this, the little notepad, you can um, mark the assignment as a quiz. So it could be a text assignment or it could be a quiz. Um, and you can look, look at that and remove questions or add questions. Um, whoops, over here, the notebook, you can view notes. Um, you can view the questions, you can view key vocabulary, or you can print the text. So if you have a student who can't get online, or maybe their combination is to use the physical print, um, then you can print the text out. So supporting student learners, this is really a fantastic tool to use to support different type of student learning um, and their different styles, because you can embed different levels of 
scaffolding and support based on, you know, you can insert a question, you can insert a note, a picture, a diagram, a video. Um, you can insert the link. Right here, whiteout means you can hide sections from students. So maybe you just want them to, it's not a text that they need to read from start to finish and there's certain parts that they don't need. You can white it out and they'll never see it. They'll just, that section will completely disappear. So again, if I am looking at a text, let's see, let's use, where's the monkey's paw one? I don't know, here's Kobe, we'll go with Kobe. Nope, okay. So if I choose a text and I wanna customize it, I can add, edit, delete questions. Um, you know, so if I don't want this poll here, it doesn't, I can edit it or I can delete it. Um, it doesn't need to go in. Obviously, things are already here, and if I don't want them there, I can also get rid of them by clicking on the snowman, edit, or delete. So I can maybe add a different, different media, or I can delete it all together. Um, and then when I'm ready to assign, well, it's switching through Google because most of mine are Google. I don't have a Canvas integrated one. Um, Second. Okay. It says, hang on a second, it's just being slow. Um, but I can also send this link directly to them or it's automatically now it's in my Google Classroom. So yours will be in your classes. So like over here, my Google Classrooms are here. I'm not integrated with Canvas. Um, so what you'll do is you'll actually create a class. And so um, let's say high school class. And then you'll pick a grade level. Oops. Let's do 10th. And then you can add a class. And then here is the code that you would give students. You can invite students um, or you can just give them this code and then they can get in. But this is where then you would assign um, things to go into this classroom, I guess you could call it. Um, but really quick before I forget, if you click on um, your name, like when you're in here, my, your initials, it'll give you the option to switch to student mode. Whoops, we don't have students in there. Let me go back to one of these. So let's me. Heads up, you're about to enter. Okay, proceed. <clears throat> so then my kiddos, you know, they might see something like this when they when they log in to actively learn. And then anything that's here, my text would be here, but nothing is assigned to them right now. So then I can just exit student mode and go back. Okay, any questions there before I move on? Nope, we're good. Okay. Um, so like I said, this over here is the exact text I got back from Actively Learn when I was chatting with them yesterday. They're not doing any type of Canvas integration. So they suggested creating um, you know, a class within Actively Learn. And then I hyperlinked this to specific examples of how to, I mean, specific directions on how to help students enroll with a class code. So, and here's the table of contents over here on this side. So if you would like to use this tool and you'd like to have them log in and, you know, access text that way, um, then this is pretty spelled out example. I mean, instructions, but one of the nice things about, like we said about Actively Learn is um, if I click on the support and then I click send a message, you can kind of see all of my messages from yesterday. So, um, I, you know, they chat with you right away. And in the earlier session, Andy was chatting because a middle school teacher had a question and they were able to, and Andy was able to get an answer right away. So if you ask them a question, even though we're not a paid customer, they will get back to you within minutes. At least I've never gone more than five minutes without an answer. Um, so they're pretty good at that. And then um, what was it that I wanted to show them, Andy? Oh, so if you go into your classroom, and you hit this wheel, you can edit your reading settings. So, so classmates can see shared notes or not. Um, they can see names with responses or not if you don't want them to see names. Um, you can lock down revision. So if I submit something, like I can't move on in the text until I've answered the teacher question. But let's say I, I submit it and I think, nope, I don't like that answer, I wanna revise it. You need to go in and change this um so that they can go back and revise it it automatically has it set that they, that they can't revise it because um this is to prevent cheating so 
it's up to you and what you want to do. But and the reason why I'm also go ahead. I found, well, I found out then um, that you, let's say you you make an assignment live and you forgot to unlock that feature. Um, from what I got back from support just a few minutes ago is that you can put it in there; it'll retroactively put it, change that setting. So, cool. so like, don't think if you made it live, all is lost. You can you can go in and change anything with that. Awesome. So then Katrina will yes. that'll change for her. Cool. Um, the other thing is with small group settings. So now that my kids are in here, um, I can assign different texts to different students. The only thing is I need to go ahead and put these kids in groups. Um, and then, then I can assign, okay, maybe I want this group to have this text, but I want this group to have this text. So if you want to do any type of differentiation or leveling of some sort, or maybe they're doing different topics. Maybe they're doing a research project and you have them doing the four whatever regions or whatever, whatever it may be, you don't have to assign the same text to everybody in the class. Um, and that's different. The, the, the freemium version, you can't assign different students different things. But with the prime version that they've opened up to everybody, you can uh, assign things to different groups of students. So there we have it. So and that's this is for K-8 uh, Google Classroom users. Um, so the next tool to go over um, is Newsella or News ELA. It's a similar tool to actively learn. Um, in my opinion, it's not as meaty or as complex. There's just not as much depth to it, but it still has some really awesome examples um, of different primary sources and speeches and just, you can still get a lot out of it. There's just, you're not embedding as much. So it is a warehouse of texts. Um, it got its start from just doing news and current events, but it has since expanded. Um, it also can be used as a close reading tool, but primarily with just the annotations and highlighting. Again, you can't embed videos or diagrams or whatever it is. Um, and then instead of having checks and questions and discussions throughout the text, there's a comprehension check at the end that you can provide. And there's also different activity, a written um, prompt that you can provide at the end. And then here is um, all the different annotation features. Um, it's just the support center. I just put a link to the support center and it talks about all the different ways that you can use um, annotations and it has teacher annotations and student annotations. So when you log into Newsella, this is what my screen looks like. And as you can see, there's not as many options at the top, but you can search by the election. If you're if you're doing election topics, news, uh, library, your content. So the library is going to be, let me go back, the panel on the left where it says art and culture, science and math, that's what the library is. It's really just breaking down their text by um, topic. Um, so, and then your content is anything that you've had, and then your binder are things that you've saved that you eventually are going to push out to students. Okay, so when you go to create an assignment, you'll choose the article, and you can assign it, or you can bookmark it. Like, if I'm, if I'm really interested in bioluminescence, I can assign it now, or like, if I'm not teaching that for two months or two weeks or whatever, I can, there's a bookmark symbol, I can just highlight that, and it'll stay in my binder so that I'm ready for it later on. I don't need to go out and push it out now to students. Um, so let me go into my account real quick. Andy, after our last uh, our last presentation, I X'd out of all of my tabs. I was thinking we were done. Yes, yeah, so that's why I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, so here's the bioluminescence one. Oops, let me go back, I hit too quickly. Okay, so um, like I can bookmark it, I can save this article, or I can hit assign. So I can create an assignment or add it to an assignment. So um, I would like to edit it so that I want to create it. And then here I can change the title um, and then I can select a class. You usually do this after you've already created a class within, within Newsella. Um, and then I can adjust the text level. Cute. Lock section. Um, and then I can I can use different instructions here. So if I want students to find examples of how bioluminescence is going to help the human race, I can say, okay, anytime you find an example, then you need to highlight it green. Or if I want to say, how does bioluminescence ensure the life of a jellyfish? 
then highlight anytime you find evidence of that highlight it in yellow i don't know whatever you want to do it doesn't even have to say highlight those are just some examples um so then you go and you view the text and um and i'll show you here in a second if this is one i've already added to so basically unlike actively learn you can't again embed all of the, all of these things. You can just annotate it. So I can use a different color and then write whatever I want to to students. Hi students, I don't know whatever whatever way that you want to support them. And then you also have these activities over here. You can write a prompt. You can use their prompt or you can edit it and push it out. Or go back, go back. There we go. There's also a comprehension check and it also gives you the correct answer. So and you can see my Lexile level is up here. So it's just, I mean, you can obviously do things with it and it has, it's great high interest text. Um, just you can't embed as many things. So um, if you are interested in using this tool, you'll go into where your initials are. So mine was the CS and I clicked on the down arrow and then I went to settings. So here I can sync with my Google classes but you'll want to create a class. Um, and then that way, you know, because they don't integrate with Canvas. So you can create a class and it, it goes through, you know, here's your class code. You can add a co-teacher, whatever it is. And then kids can come in through here or you can give them the link, either one. So do we have any questions of something I should go into maybe farther in depth or a specific question that would help with your individual classroom? I don't know what happened to your screen key, but it's unlocked. Never mind. You're back now. Um, yeah, Actively Learn and, and Newzella are going to be two different um, points for why you would use one of them. You know, News, Newzella is going to be definitely much more current news uh, stuff. It would be better for primary sources, whereas Actively Learn is going to be your ed puzzle for text for all intents and purposes. Um, but you can do a little bit of that with Newzella, but not as much as you can with Actively Learn. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'll put in that. I know a couple people came in here. You, you were able to ask them a question and get the answer within like a minute. Right? Yeah. 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 I'm reading back mm -hmm. the chat. They're amazing. Yeah, and they're, I mean, and, and their guides, I'll say for both, but especially for actively learn, their guides are very. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Have a good day.